Hello everyone, my name is Samantha Calder and this channel covers topics all about making glass art. Starting with today's video and over the course of the next few videos, I'm going to share with you how I have taken a basic stained glass bat pattern and dressed it up for Halloween. Now if you'd like to get notifications when those videos do get posted, go ahead and click the subscribe button below and click that bell icon to get notifications. Also, if you struggle with getting smooth solder on your stained glass projects, there is a link in the video description below where you can get access to a video that shares three tips that will make all the difference to your soldering. Now let's get on to today's project. The bat design I'm using for this project is one that I have designed myself and is available for purchase on my website. You'll find the link for the pattern below, but I would like to just take a quick second to show you what's included with all of the patterns that are found on my site. So I put a great deal of effort into creating patterns that are easy for you to use. And so every pattern comes with a cover page showing a colored image of the design and the dimensions indicated there as well. On the second page, you'll actually see all of the color recommendations based on the coloring you see on the cover image. Following that is the pattern itself. And some patterns will include additional instructions or specific details that will help you in constructing the design you're making. The bat doesn't have that included. So here you can just see a printout of what this particular pattern looks like. So once we get to the actual pattern pages, you can see that there are margins down the edges of the pages. So the easiest thing to do is to just grab a ruler and draw some straight lines in there so that when you're cutting it out, you're cutting a straight line. If you just want to eyeball it, feel free to do that. So after cutting these margins off of the pages, all you need to do is use some clear tape to stick the design together. If you choose to label them, you can. I don't pre-label them because everybody has their own method for labeling the pieces. Uh, I myself like to label them by the sections that I'm going to use for the colors. So for my bat, I'm using two different colors of glass. The inner wings and the inner ears are one color. And then the top of the wings, the body, the head, and the outer part of the ears are all going to be a second coloring. So in this case, you see me labeling them left and right with numbers for one color, and then left and right again with letters for the second color. Feel free to label the pattern however you would like. Once that's complete, you can just take some scissors or pattern shears, whichever you like to use. I personally like to use scissors, so that's what I'm using here. And then simply cut out your pattern pieces so that they're ready to trace onto the glass. So here you can see I'm using a silver colored permanent marker, and this is specifically to mark on that purple glass that I'm going to be using. When you're tracing your pattern pieces onto a dark colored glass, it's important that the lines still be easily visible so that when you're cutting, your cut lines are much more exact. If you're using a dark colored marker on a dark colored glass, it gets very tricky to see what you're doing. So here I'm just playing with these pattern pieces and laying them out. This is scrap glass that I had in my scrap bucket. And so I was just trying to make sure that the ripple design on this particular glass all goes the same direction in those wing pieces for when it's finished and cut out. Moving on to the other color that I have here, I'm just going to again lay out the pieces and I'm going to trace these with a black marker since the silver marker isn't going to show strongly against this background. Just remember that it's always important to think through how you're going to cut the pieces apart as you're tracing them onto the glass. So lay them out accordingly. And the first cut, uh, obviously we missed it on the camera, uh, ran out of battery and so here we are. So the head is the first piece being cut out and I'm just going to use my cutting tools to score the glass and then break off each piece. So as you can tell, the footage in the video has been sped up a little bit. I wanted to refrain from trying to cut out and pare down the video as much as possible because I know a lot of you enjoy seeing each and every step of making a process, but instead of it taking a couple of hours over the course of all the videos for this project, I wanted to make sure that we were doing it in a timely fashion. So it has been sped up. 
but I am keeping as much of the footage in here as possible so that you can see exactly what I'm doing every step of the way. Now, if you're fairly new to stained glass and you haven't developed a comfortable feel for using the breaking pliers for breaking the glass, I do have a couple of videos that I'll link in the cards. So just check the top right corner here. And uh, if you click that, you will open up other videos that will show you exactly how to use the running pliers, which are the larger ones, and the grossing pliers, which are the smaller ones. You'll notice that when I cut out these long skinny pieces of glass, I always make one of the break lines to separate all the pieces, one of the actual lines of the piece of glass. It saves the trouble of ending up with such narrow slivers along the edges that you need to pull off that are too hard to pull off because they're just too narrow. So I usually try to separate my pieces on the sheet of glass by placing them an appropriate distance that I can break them apart easily. Using a fluid motion when you're cutting these longer strips is always going to be to your benefit. Just a few more pieces of this glass to cut out and then we'll be able to move on to the purple. At this point, as I'm cutting them apart, I start laying them out into the design shape so that I make sure I've got all the pieces that I need. And so you can see there I have the two little pieces of the ears and then the outer part of the top of the wings. The last couple of pieces in this color will be those intersections of the top part of the wings. Now both of the glasses that I'm using here, I believe are spectrum glass. The purple for certain is an original spectrum glass. It's the grape color and it's a rough roll texture that I'm using so it's going to have a nice tight little ripple effect on it. And then this other color that I have, it's a beautiful color that I like to use for a lot of different projects. I bought a lot of this glass when Spectrum gave notice that they were closing. Um, because it was one that I really enjoyed and it does have that pinkish purple tint in it And so by tying it with the purple for the inner part of the wings, I thought it was going to work really well for this project So as I said Previously this project is one that I'm dressing up So I'm not just using the pattern the way it is I'm going to do more to it and so the videos will help give you hopefully some inspiration for ways that maybe you can take some patterns and add a little bit of a twist to it by adding your own flair to the project. So now it's time to move on to doing the purple glass. You're going to see that I use that broom a lot throughout the video and that's simply because when you're cutting the glass you want to make sure that there's absolutely no crumbs of glass or any unevenness on the surface you're using when scoring the glass because that could cause a fracture when you push on the top and there's something underneath it. So keeping a little broom nearby is a great way to keep your counters clean while you're cutting the glass. So that silver marker that I used on here, it makes it very, very easy to see where I'm cutting the lines. And it means that my lines are gonna be a little bit more accurate and that in turn uh, results in less time being spent on the grinder. So here you see me nibbling it quite a bit, trying to get that little edge off. As I mentioned before, having really narrow pieces along the edge of the glass that you need to remove is very challenging to get them to break off in a nice smooth way. And therefore you do end up with a little bit more chipping when that happens. 
Here I decided I needed one more score just to help release that so that it was a little bit easier to get the pliers into the area I was trying to work with. Inside curves, this sort of shape is a great time to use those grossing pliers to help pull that piece of glass in the middle out. By trimming away as much of the glass as you can in the cutting stage, you really do reduce the amount of time you spend on the grinder. And I'm rather curious, what part of the process of making stained glass do you find to be the hardest? I personally love cutting glass and I love soldering it. It's kind of the first part of starting to see it take shape with the cutting and then with the soldering it's that very last step of being able to actually start assembling the project and then of course you get that sneak peek of when you're going to pick it up and turn it over to solder the second side it's the very first time you get to see your project with light coming through it and i always find that to be the most exciting for me personally so i'd love to hear from you What's your favorite thing about making stained glass? Which step of the process gets you excited and exhilarated about making more projects? So leave your comments below and I'll be sure to check them out. If you like this video, please hit the like or subscribe button. It really helps me out. I'll see you guys next week in the second video of this series. Thank you so much for watching.